All right, howdy everybody. It's Matt Brady from Samsara out here with Neil Kennedy, our cellar master. We're at the very windy John Sebastiano Vineyard in Santa Rita Hills. And uh, just being up here, and I think you can probably feel here, maybe even taste the wind through this video, uh, but you can see that this side is just totally exposed. The block that we're in in particular is just windswept, really heavily impacted by the, the maritime influence. Um, and it just, you know, these extreme conditions make it uh, a somewhat challenging site to grow. Uh, and at this time of the year, in the springtime, it is just windy as can be. Um, so anyhow, Neil's standing right here in our Chardonnay block. Samsara works with three varietals from John Sebastiano. We get Chardonnay, a couple different clones, right here, the Winty and Clone 76. And then we, we also have some uh, Syrah planted here and some Pinot Noir. So we thought we'd take a little walk through the vineyard and talk about and demonstrate, you know, these extreme conditions that really make John Sebastiano wines super distinctive and really special. Um, and we had a fun little drive in on the vineyard. I, I was in the back of the truck with the video camera. So hopefully uh, that all works out on the, on the back end and you guys all get to see that. But it was fun riding up here in the back of the truck. And uh, this really is always one of my favorite sites to visit because our section is all the way in the back of the vineyard. And it's just uh, an adventure to get out here. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's super beautiful. So uh, anyhow, that's, take, that's a look at the Chardonnay block here. It actually looks pretty good this year. Um, they've done a little bit more aggressive shoot thinning and uh, we're hoping for some you know, it's hard to say with this wind, with the lines getting beat up, but we're hoping for uh, a good fruit scent and some good yields. I don't know if you can see it, but they're just starting to flower as we speak. I, I bet flowering really just started to happen this week in a lot of places. So, and I've got the hat on backwards or it's gonna fly away. It's, it's not my new look. But uh, let's, we're gonna walk down over to the Syrah block here and uh, we get clone 470 Syrah out here. We don't make very much of it. We usually get just enough for a few barrels. Uh, Neil, do you want to talk about the Syrah a little bit and yeah. how we make it? So typically with our JSP Syrah, we're doing anywhere between 50 to 75% uh, wool cluster. And uh, with that wool cluster and everything that's not being extended, we're doing quite some. even really know what to, how to put our finger on it but it's something we get out of this site you can see our signpost right here for the 470 um, it's something we get year after year and it's just cool and different and you know when I think about all the different vineyards that Samsara has in the lineup uh, you know really what makes the wines shine on their own is their own kind of personality and uniqueness and really speaking to a sense of place. And I think I think this JSV Syrah definitely does that. It's, it's one of my favorites, and I know we have some JSV fans out there too. We're, uh, because it's so windy, I mean, take, take a look at these vines right now. Just whipping around in the wind. The Syrah can typically take a beating because it's a little bit hardier, and it also is a later ripener. So it hasn't started to flower yet, like the Chardonnay and some of the Pinot Noir. This, in fact, is our last vineyard, the Syrah, that comes in, uh, typically. Yeah. 
Yep, that's a good point. It's uh, even though we're on the east end of Santa Rita Hills, where conventional wisdom would say it's a little bit warmer because of this really extreme, exposed, cool site. This Syrah ripens so slow, and we're typically picking it in November, and with the goal of being done by Thanksgiving, so everybody can, you know, go home and eat turkey with their family, but I, I think at least one year I had to come back after turkey dinner and do some punch downs. But, uh, but anyhow, let's, let's walk down the road a little, and, uh, walk all the way down to the Pinot block, but we're going to point it out, and you know, the JSV Pinot, for me, it's been a component in our Santa Rita Hills uh, bottling, and it really just always has this great purity of fruit and freshness, and you know, what I look for in our Pinot sites is vineyards that can produce fruit that's not just one-dimensional, not just tutti-frutti, but fruit that has layers and some complexity, and of course that all begins in the vineyard with uh, the high farming standards and limiting yields using sustainable and organic farming practices which they do here at John Sebastiano uh, there's the trusty work truck and uh, and our Pinot Noir block is right, right down there uh, let's see it's kind of hard to do this right there pretty excited about it this year. It's, it's, it's right on track with the Chardonnay just about. And uh, at the risk of flying off this hill in this wind, we're gonna, we're gonna call it quits right now. But we're uh, stoked to be out here on a beautiful day. Uh, it's really not this windy everywhere. Uh, it's just, just when you're on top of this super exposed hilltop, you get all of it. And I mean, it feels like it, jumped off the side of the hill, you keep going. Um, but we're not going to do that. We've got tacos to eat, so we're going to go find a, a wind-protected spot to eat some tacos, and uh, and then carry on and go look at some other vineyards. But uh, thank you guys for joining us. Neil, thanks for coming out here today. Absolutely. And uh, drink lots of wine, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.